Hi, this is Mike Levine of Audio Fanzine, and we are outside the mill room of the Gibson Guitar Factory here in Nashville, Tennessee, and we're going to go through and take a tour and see how they put things together. Now, this particular room is kind of where it all starts, so let's go find out what's going on. So we're here with Joe McGee, who is one of the department supervisors here and uh, is uh, thoroughly familiar with the manufacturing process. It's going to help us uh, understand what we're looking at. Joe, thanks for helping us out. Oh, no problem. All right, so what are we going to look at first? Well, this is our mill room. This is where everything kind of starts out. We first take the raw lumber, start to process it, uh, cut oh. it into sizes to make guitars out of. So this is mahogany? Yep, mahogany. This is what it looks like when we get it. And this, these pieces are some, well, I guess this one's big enough to be used for a body. They're, they're used for bodies and necks? Yep, bodies and necks, yeah, okay. And where's the first place they go? First place they go is over here at the planer. We'll uh, plane them, plane the top of them. We'll start to check the moisture content, look for defects. So tell, tell me about the moisture content issue. It needs to be at about 8%. Uh, that seems to be best to keep it stable throughout the process. And what would happen if it was too moist? Too moist, uh, it could develop cracks or, or what we call checks in the wood. Uh, it could warp. And what if it was too dry? Too dry, it could, it could check or it could take on moisture, get big and warp another way. I see. Okay, cool. So you, uh, over time, you've come to that 8% figure. Yeah. 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 Okay, well, let's go check that out. Okay. So, now what's going on with this wood? This has been cut a little bit already? Yeah, this has been cut into sizes we can start to make bodies out of it with. And are these mostly for Les Pauls? Mostly for Les Pauls, yep. Uh, out of all the electrics made here, what, what percentage of them are Les Pauls? Les Pauls, probably right about 60, 65 percent, yeah. So what is that uh, that orange uh, thing that's lifting up and down there? That's a big cross cut saw. Ah. Uh, he's uh, cutting, he's marking defects out of it and cutting those out, cutting the good wood into pieces that we could use, sizes that we could use. Cool. Well, this is a glue reel. We're taking uh, pieces of maple, glue and top together for less ball. And how many pieces get used in in a in the body of a less ball? How many pieces of wood? I guess it'd be, yeah, less ball standard be three pieces, uh, two pieces of maple for the top and a piece of mahogany for the back. Gotcha. So tell us about this this machine over here. Uh, it's just a big CNC router. We use it to uh, cut the shape of the bodies out and to carve the top, cut the control pockets out of it. Wow, so that's what it looks like after that machine. Huh? Yep, that'd be a less ball standard body right there. Wow, and it's got... Already got the routing for the uh, electronics in there, mm -hmm. and and also for the knobs, right? Yep, yep, and the uh, uh, mortise for the uh, neck. Oh, and, and uh, the switch, the and, toggle yep. switch, yeah. Yep. Later on, we'll cut the, the uh, holes for the uh, pickups, the bridge, the tailpiece once the neck is in it. Okay, so uh, what's going on here? Uh, Terrence here is going to cut out a, a neck blank for us. This is how all the necks start out. He specs the piece of wood he's going to cut the neck out of. He's got a template he puts on there to make sure the grain's oriented correctly, um, stay away from any defects. He'll trace around it and then he'll cut it out with a bandsaw. Wow. Guess he's got to be really careful working here, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What happens with all the excess wood that gets cut off? Do you have any uses for it? Yeah, a lot of it we use here for some of the smaller little pieces here, there, or even repair. All right, so this is the piece after it was cut. Right. That's how they all start. You can see where he traced around it there. Wow, very nice. It, it'll go on some different machines after this to start to shape it. That machine, I can see it, it's got uh, bits that punch out the holes for the uh, tuners, is that right? Right, right. It's called a gang drill, so it drills all six holes for the tuners at the same time. And then it ends up looking like that, right? Looking like this. So now it's ready to have the truss rod put in. Ooh, look at that guitar. Uh, it's 
He's, he put the truss rods in and then he's gluing a piece of maple right on top of it, which will be shaved eventually. Right, right. We call it a spline, but it uh, holds the truss rod down in place. He'll put it into a fixture behind him to let the glue dry. Now we're going to head into the main building and see where they finish the guitars. Look at that. Okay, so he's, uh, he's gluing the fingerboards onto the neck. What, what kind of glue do they use for that? It's regular wood glue. And how long does it have to set for? It sits in there for about 20 minutes under a lot of pressure. Um, then, then we can pull it out and finish working on the neck. Okay, and now over here, she was putting those uh, those uh, pieces that go on the headstock through that. What does that machine over there do? Uh, it's a it's like a planer sander. So she's sanding them, sanding them down to the right thickness and roughing up one side so the, so they'll stick to the peg head. So here's what it looks like after uh, they're done with those two processes, right? Yeah, yeah. This would be a Les Paul standard neck. It's got the finished fingerboard on it, veneer over the peg head face. Very nice. Binding got its name literally from them binding the guitars, huh? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. never realized that. Yeah, it's just we still do it in old traditional instrument building technique, just uh, that rope and holds it real tight, keeps it flush around there while the while the glue dries. It takes about six hours for the glue to dry. So this is actually the material that gets bound onto the the sides. Uh, and, and and what is this made of? It, it's like a, it's a PVC type plastic, very flexible. It looks like wood. You know? Yeah, it does look a, a bit like wood. Yeah, that's good. And how how many uh, winds around do they have to do to make it? I think it's about 130 all together. So pretty much the same same every time. That's the slack belt machine. What does that do? Uh, kind of smooths the body out from where we've carved the top. Gets rid of any machine marks or glue left on there from binding. Um, oh, so this is a little bit rough. It's a little rough. This is right out of the mill room where we started. He gets uh, he gets done with that, and it's it's a little bit hard to see visually, but it's real oh, smooth. Yeah. 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 Okay, so what's going on with these presses here? Uh, these two presses, the uh, Made in USA stamp and the uh, serial number that go on the back of the peg head. And then you have a, a, an inventory uh, control uh, process here as well, right? Yeah, we, we uh, put an RFID tag on the back side of the fingerboard before we glue it on. Um, that way we can we know where everything's at in here. It's got the model, the color, and the serial number on it. So we, it's kind of an inventory thing for us. We don't have to go out and find them, we know how many we have. So you were saying back in the old days you'd have to run out and count them, huh? Yes, when I started, yeah, we had to go out and find them and count them. And Guess you're happy about this new system, right? Very happy about that, yeah. So uh, this is where the necks and the bodies get put together? Yeah, this is what we call neck fitting. Uh, he'll get rid of some machine marks on the front of the body. He'll uh, check the neck, check if, if it's straight, uh, check the, the pitch on it, make sure the pitch is correct in relation to the body, and the alignment of the neck and all. Fit the neck in there good and tight and then glue it up. Uh, this is where we route the uh, pickup holes, the uh, bridge, the tailpiece. So that, that thing just lowers it, it one, do it in one pass or several passes? It, it'll take several passes, go through a couple of different tools. Is this computer controlled? Yes, yeah, yep. CNC machine, computer num numeric controlled. Uh, this machine I know has to do with the frets. Tell, tell me what it's doing. It, it, what it's going to do is going to measure uh, cut down, trim, uh, and, and uh, crown the fret. It's going to make all the frets the same height while the neck is under simulated string tension. So it's like a, fr a fret job machine. Yeah, it's like a fret job. It's like a magic fret job machine. <laughs> I got to get one of these in my house. 
there's these conveyor belts up around the ceiling here. What's the story? They they taking the guitars from one section to another, or what? Yeah, kind of. Uh, one brings the work in here to this area uh, where we sand them and put wood filler on them and stain. The other one takes them away and gets them out of the way while the stain dries. Look at those guitars. They're like. They've been they've been hanged. <laughs> the way they're swinging. So this is the area where the sunburst gets painted on. How, how does that work? Because I never understood that. Well, it's called a shade line. So they'll start out with whatever the base color be, and they'll spray the whole top, and then they'll start to shade the periphery of it out with you know either brown or black or. Whatever. And is it all sprayed on? Yeah, yeah, all sprayed, all done by hand. Wow, they must be real good because <laughs> those things look great when they're yeah, done. Yeah, they're pretty good. And I guess a lot of it has to do also with the the, the wood, right? The the grain in the wood. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like figured maple, you know, really makes a big difference over plain. So uh, you have to explain this. <laughs> <laughs> Area 51. Uh, one of our repair people. We call him Tom. That's that's his name. Area 51. It's his area. And he's responsible for all these kind of unusual Very unusual designs. things. Tom does all our one-off stuff for these, us. These like custom things? Yes, yeah, a lot of custom stuff. Uh, new ideas, a lot of them have come out of this area right here. The, the guitar with the, the picture of the skyline on it, how did that? How did they get that onto the guitar? Uh, we, we laser etched that on from a, from a photograph. And then painted? Yep, yep, and then painted. Wow. So this is the scraping section. Uh, explain what happens here. I mean, I know they're scraping, but a little right, more detail right. yet. <laughs> well, they're, they're scraping paint off of uh, areas like the binding, and the binding going around the body or the edge of the fingerboard, sometimes around the peg head. We do that instead of masking because it's just a much sharper, cleaner line than if you use masking tape. So if I understand this correctly, they, they'll paint the whole surface and then the parts that aren't supposed to have paint actually get the paint scraped off and that's because it just looks better. Right, because it looks better, it's a lot cleaner. We, we spray lacquer over it after that. So we only scrape the paint off and maybe it just, just shave the binding. So we're here in the electronics room and I was surprised to discover that all the pickups get uh, manufactured right here. Tell us about it. Yeah, we make them all right here. We make uh, the pickups that, for the guitars that we run, the custom shop. Um, our Memphis division, uh, aftermarket. So we make well, 1,500, 2,000 pickups a day. Wow. And, and what's the basic, uh, what are the basic steps in assembling a pickup? Pickup is basically a magnet with a, a copper wire wound around it. Most of our pickup models get soaked in wax for a little while to kind of solidify the coils so you don't get feedback. Uh, we do about 140 different pickup models. Not all every day, but wow. Hey, tell us about the final assembly room. Uh, final assembly, the uh, guitars come here from buffing, all shiny and nice and clean. We put parts on them, uh, what we call build them, uh, put strings on them and adjust them, tune them, adjust them, make sure they work right, and then we clean them again because now they fingerprints on them and stuff, and then the quality control is a real thorough check on them, plays each one, takes a picture of it that goes in the case, kind of like a baby photo. Ah. But people can see after they've messed up their guitar what it used to look right, like, right? What it, what it looked like when it was fresh and new, yeah. yeah. And so when the guitars arrive here, there's no hardware, no pickups, nope. no wiring, no nothing, nope. right? Just naked, come in here, clean, shiny. Okay, well, let's, let's look at some of these uh, processes. Okay, so this line of stations here it, in final assembly, they're adding hardware. Is that basically what's going on? Yeah, yeah. We, we call these guys builders, so they're putting the parts on. Um, tuning machines, uh, putting the jack on, putting uh, CPAs, the volume and tone right. control, and all that in there. Uh, bridge and tailpiece, getting all that stuff ready. You get them ready for the adjusters. And, and so the adjusters are the people who actually tweak everything, do the setup essentially? Right, right. Some people call them tweakers. They yeah. put the strings on them, set them up, play them, make sure they work right. From there they go to the cleaners, because now they've got fingerprints from the adjusters on them. Uh, so here we are in, in uh, with one of the adjusters. Does he have a specific thing he's checking for? Yeah, he's, he's set it up to spec now and he's got it tuned. 
He's gonna play it all up and down the neck, make sure there's no buzzes or splatty places or anything. Uh, make sure it works and sounds right, plays right. So this is the final stop here? This is the final stop here. This is where uh, quality control does one more check on the, the finish, the fit, uh, the playability, the sound, the whole guitar, uh, and then takes a picture of it before it goes out. So this is a completely finished and with its baby picture. That's right, the baby photo prominently displayed there. At top capacity, how, how many guitars could be made in this factory in a day? Most we've done, when we're at peak capacity, it's usually somewhere around 750 or so a day. Wow, that's a lot of guitars. Joe, thank you so much. Really appreciate it, man. Very, very cool. and. Uh, I think our viewers are going to really like seeing this. Great. You're welcome. Glad to have you here. All right. Take care of yourself.